Hi, and welcome ham radio enthusiasts. Thank you for coming here. This is the vlog number two that I'm going to be doing weekly and where I just give updates on what's going on in the community, the YouTube ham radio community, our tight little group of whatever we are. All right, first of all, I'm going to be talking about the cold that happened this week. Um, I'm still waiting on my antenna to come. Uh, I'm going to tell you about some books I'm reading recently and some kind of updates on me. I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you an email that I got about a modification for the manual tuner, the eight, the MFJ 971. I'm going to show you a modification that I got, a nice email somebody sent me. We're going to talk about Dayton 2019 coming up and, and a couple of the videos I'm making, and that's going to be the video for this week. All right, first of all, this week, what was it? It was unbelievable cold, followed by unbelievably hot, and now it's cold again. So the weirdest thing happened this week. We had the polar vortex thing, and it went, it came down like a V. I think that's why they call it a vortex, and it really hit Chicago, but it came down and hit us pretty hard, too. It was so cold that it got, not that cold, but it got around zero, but it was really windy, right? It was so cold, though, that they canceled school for two days. My kid was home from school for two days. What's weird about that is two days later, it was so hot that I had to turn on the air conditioning in my car. So I went from having to turn my car on to heat it up, to defrost the windows for 10 minutes before I went to work, to two days later, rolling down the window, turning on the air conditioner because I was too hot. That's how weird it is. Now, I've lived all over the country. I've lived in Roanoke, Virginia. I've learned, lived in uh, Chicago. I've, I've traveled to Atlanta. I've lived all over the country, pretty much in the mid, mostly in, in the Midwest area. Everywhere I go, everyone always says that their wet weather is really weird. They always say, oh, just wait five minutes and the weather will change. Well, I will say that probably here in St. Louis, it's probably the weirdest weather I've ever had because what I've heard is that it's like a transition area between the north and the south. And so there's lots of things going on in between the transition area. All right, before I get too far into that, let's move on and let's talk about... Huh, I'm still waiting on my high-end fed antenna. The one I got was the classic, I think it was, the classic. Still waiting on it to come. I'm really excited. I almost wish I would have just paid more and got it. Um, but it's still waiting. It's going to be another week before I get it, and I'm excited. I think it's going to get rid of my tuner. I got a nice email from a guy, uh, and I don't want to give a lot of names away because I don't have permission, but some guy told me that uh, it doesn't tune up very well on 40 meters because it's not in the right wavelength it's I, I don't know how long it is but it's not in a really good uh wavelength for 40 meters so it probably won't tune that well but we'll find out and i will tell you about it all right i've got two videos coming out one of them is a qso that i had last weekend on cw and what's weird about it is uh, first of all it was in my basement so when you see it come out what's weird about it is the guy was only eight miles away so i went from talking to arizona to florissant which is eight miles away from me and he recognized me from YouTube. On I'm doing straight key, and he goes, I know you from your videos. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It's so weird to talk to somebody that knows me from my videos. But it happens every now and then. So that's in one of my next videos coming up. I have it, I've already made it. It's already scheduled. I like to release them in the morning. It gets better coverage if you re release it in the morning. That's, there's a long story to that, but there's a, there's a way to release videos. If you do it at the wrong time, then people are asleep while you do it, and it gets stale. So anyway, that's coming out in the morning. All right, uh, I'm going to be making a video called a Parks on the Air Quick Start Guide. And this is a very rough guide for people. Somebody sent me an email and said, I wish you'd make a video on how to do Parks on the Air because there's not a really good instructional out there. So I'm going to try to put together something on how to get started in, on Parks on the Air. Even though I'm not really an expert at it, I'm still going to put something together to get you started on Parks on the Air. That is coming, I promise, this week. Um, I actually, I've already shot some of the video. I actually went and did part of Parks on the Air yesterday, but I haven't made the video yet. So that's coming out. Okay, so what am I doing right now? Just in case you're interested, I'm reading uh, this book, The Origins in History of Consciousness. Uh, this book is really interesting. I like to read things that are out of my comfort zone. It keeps me more, I don't know, well-rounded. gives me things I would never have thought about before. Um, I'm reading... I actually bought three or four Ansel Adams books online, used, and the reason I'm reading these is because, first of all, I heard they're good, but Ansel Adams, of course, as you know, was a famous photographer. 
and I'm interested in videography because I make YouTube videos. And what better way to study videography than to study uh, photography? So I got these used. They're they're like six to seven dollars used. There's three of them. One of them's called the camera. One of them is called the print, and I forgot what the other one is. And this one is interesting because it is called the making of 40 autographs. He he takes a picture and he tells you exactly how he made it and what he went through to make these images. Some of them are really cool. This particular image is interesting. It's of a city in in a Santa near Santa Fe or New Mexico or something. I don't want to go too much into depth on that. If you want to know more, I'll tell you in the in the description because this is a ham radio video, ham radio channel. All right, now let's go to my email. Okay, so I get I've been starting to get a lot of really nice comments from really nice people. I really appreciate it. I swear half the joy of making ham radio videos are the comments and the people. I almost feel if I don't get a comment, I almost feel like what's going on, you know? Tell me what's going on. Most 99% 95% of them are good. Every now and then I get a bad one, some nasty people, but I just delete those. Most of them are really good. I want to thank you. All right, here's an example. I get emails too. I got two or three people tell me about the same exact thing. This is a modification to the MFJ 971, and I want to give credit to Gary Keniston for sending me pictures. He's the only one that sent me pictures, so that's why I'm highlighting him here. He sent me pictures on how to modify the MFJ portable tuner. I really like this tuner. I just wish it wasn't so boxy. It's real big and boxy and kind of clunky. You know, I wish it was tighter. But anyway, it's still a good tuner. I really like it. I used it yesterday, in fact. Um, so the modification is this switch right here. You see that switch? It is a bypass switch. All it is is you, I have one on my MFJ downstairs. If I hit it, it'll bypass and just, it'll skip. It'll just skip everything and it'll be like there's no tuner there at all. But this is a modification on how to do it. And if you notice here, we have a switch and all it does is it basically makes a connection, I think, between these, I believe these are variable capacitors. It makes this connection and it does what we call in the software world, uh, like hard codes it. It hard codes it to bypass. So it's the same thing as turning it off. Anyway, I love this idea for a mod because you can switch it very easily without having to unscrew the back, unscrew the back, unscrew it back in, unscrew it, unscrew it, you know, do, do that, all that. If you had a switch, this would be a great modification. I don't have time to do modifications though. I just don't. I've got two kids, a full-time job, a wife, and my mom lives in Oklahoma. My wife lives, parents live in Chicago, and I've got a YouTube channel, so this is probably not going to happen anytime soon. I just wish I could just hand this to somebody and they would do it. Anyway, this is a modification. I really like it. Thank you for the video. I'm featuring this this week as one of the most, a very simple thing. You know, it's nothing complex. This isn't, there's nothing crazy complex here, but it's a great idea. Just add a, a bypass switch. Thank you very much, Gary. Now, I'm getting towards the end of my time here, and I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. I have my notes over here. That's why I'm looking that way. All right, Dayton 2019. It is coming upon us. I'm planning on going, okay? This will be the third year in a row I've gone. Here, I'm going to tell you real quick my experience. The first year I went, 2016, 17, 18. 2017, 2018, 29. 2017 was the first year that they had it at Xenia. Xenia. X-E-N-I-A. Xenia. It's the first year they had it at Xenia. And I will say there was a kind of a buzz. There was kind of an energy there that I had never seen before. So I go there. I'm really excited. I have a video of it, I think. It's, it's very bad because I didn't know about image stabilization back there. And I was doing this with my camera. And it's was like shaky as hell. It's shaky as hell. But anyway, I have a video of my experience there and i will say there was this energy there there were there were some booths there that i would never have dreamed of that's where i got my uh pack tenant from for the first time i paid 100 percent for that thing by the way i did i did not get a deal i did not get that for free anyway um i bought it there and then the next year i went last year 2018 and i was thinking it didn't have that same energy it didn't have that same buzz it's almost like everyone wanted to see what xenia was like this year they wanted to go and see the excitement, the new stuff, the new new venue, right? But then the next year they go, eh, eh, I saw it. Don't need to go. There were there were big there were areas there with less there was it seemed more crammed the year before. And this year, you you know, the Elecraft booth was jammed with people. The next year I went, last year, it was like you could just walk up. I had to wait in line to buy my uh, KX2. This year, 
last year, it, you could have just walked up and bought it, you know. Pac Tenna wasn't there at all. There were two or three places that I thought would be there, uh, booths that I thought would be there. They weren't there. It was disappointing, really. It just didn't have that same energy as the year before. I hate to say it, but mm, but let me just say, it's up to us to keep this community going. It's up to us to show up. It's up to us to go there. And all right, and along those lines, and I'm sorry I'm going over 10 minutes, but I was thinking, if you're interested in, maybe we could have a YouTube community meetup. And I'm not the only YouTuber that I would like to meet myself. There are other YouTubers, and if they're they're watching this and they're interested and they're going to be there, maybe we could have an after-hours drink or something. Maybe we could find a pizza parlor, you know, and they might have a back room, and we could have pizzas and just have some drinks and talk and have a YouTube community get-together. Maybe. You know, ask us questions. We ask you questions. Meet the viewers. Meet the other YouTubers. Um, if there's interest, write it down in the comments. If you know of a good place to meet, maybe we'll do it. I would prefer not to do it at the at Hamvention. I prefer prefer to do it off site somewhere, like after hours. Um, but if you want to meet for an hour or two, and if everyone's really excited, that's a good idea. Then we'll do it. If no one wants to do it, then we won't do it. I don't care. Or I even maybe want to operate. You know, I was thinking about making maybe some night doing an operation, a field operation. But anyway, these things are hard to set up um, because you're traveling. You're there for a purpose. You're trying to buy stuff, and you got to get home. You got to you know live out of a hotel. These things are hard to arrange. So, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing it. I would need some help if we were to do something like this. But I'd be willing to have a, a meetup. Why not have a drink? Let me know in the comments what you think. This is a good idea. If you know of any other YouTubers or any other people that you would want to meet and talk to, and see, maybe we could have something going on. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Let me know. Thank you for watching. This is number two. There's going to be one every week, and there's always something going on, but start thinking about dating. Get your hotel room, man.